Hello everyone and welcome to the Mank Podcast, a very Mank podcast for the people of Greater Manchester. The regular cast is here. I'm Joe, we've got Steph, Hiya. hello, Tim, hello. and a very special guest today, uh, Rowetta. How are you doing, Rowetta? You okay? I'm really well, considering. Thank Good, you. Yeah, you got a nice hot chocolate there? I have, yeah. Uh, I, Rowetta, I was like a, a tea boy, basically, when Rowetta was I doing... I can't believe you remember when that when I Rowetta, drank... When I first started my career, I used to make brews for Rowetta. She never That's liked tea or for coffee. For me? Yeah, for you. Hardly ever. I hardly ever drink brews. I couldn't believe you remembered but that. She loves a hot chocolate. You and weren't my tea one. boy, though. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, today is all about our regular features, talking about the Big Mac stories. But the big thing is having a chat with Rowetta about her career and about what's coming up for Happy Mondays and the solo stuff as well. So many exciting things to talk about. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to do a little icebreaker just between us three about what uh, the most exciting thing we've done this week is. Does anything have... Anyone have anything they want to shout about? Oh, not really. I've just been filming again, filming some food. Filming food. Do you like food or what? Everybody likes food. Everyone likes food. What food have you been filming this week? Pure burgers. Burgers. Fucking on burgers. Fucking on burgers. What burger was it? It was at Archie's. It was like a Cheetos burger, so it had crisps on it. Ooh. Yeah, it was a crisp bit, on a burger or whatever. I could do that, but I'm just not really a burgery a person. Burger, yeah. what, I don't what? mind a turkey burger. A turkey, mm. a turkey, a turkey burger. burger. I like a turkey burger. A festive like, turkey burger. I do not festive. No, I like it with mushrooms, egg. Uh, salt and pepper. Ooh, oh, that sounds wow. very nice. Ooh. Bit of barbecue sauce? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't start throwing stuff in there. No, I don't, need, no, don't like all that. I like, I like plain cake? things. Sometimes I like a bit of cheese on things. Oh, I do yeah. like cheese. But not too much. I don't like not the processed one. I don't yeah. like that. A bit of cheddar. I like Cheshire as well, actually. Oh, have you ever thought about your own cooking show? <laughs> cooking no. Rowetta? I'm a bit busy. Are you a bit busy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tim, anything exciting this week? Um, yeah, well, we went and did the Buzz Rocks yes. uh, video, didn't we? That was pretty good. Buzz Rocks was Lovely amazing. Lovely people nice. and Thank amazing you. food. Amazing food. Best coleslaw. Really good that. We've ever had. Buzz we Rocks is gorgeous. Buzz yeah. Rocks is great. Now we're it? talking, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, we had a chat with them about being the first uh, Caribbean food stall at Glastonbury yeah. 30 years ago, which is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, cool. Go check that video out now at The Mank. Uh, but yeah, let's get into Rowetta. What we do is, because uh, The Mank have got their own website, they've got some big stories, we just bring a story each to the podcast and we just chat about it. Okay. I'll lead first because... I know you're a big United fan. Yeah. And Marcus Rashford has got his own documentary coming out on the BBC all wow. about his journey of what he's been doing the last couple of months, helping feed the children of Britain. And we want to just bring that to the table because don't miss it. Make sure you watch it. It'll be amazing. Uh, you're a massive Marcus Rashford fan, I guess. Yeah, and it looks amazing as well. And Marcus went to my son's school. Oh, Button did Lane, he? yeah, his primary too? school. Didn't you? No Not way. Yeah, did this you? is his primary school. Did yeah, he you? went to the Sale Grammar after, but the different ages. My son's like in his 30s, but... Oh, right, right. Yeah, it's really, really lovely when he was, they were talking about the free dinners and all that. Like, yeah. I really related because that was similar to me when mine went to Button Lane. But when I took him to the Bobby Charlton School of Football, I thought I might have a little rising star. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no good. No, no. 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 <laughs> but when he went and got his award, I went obviously to chaperone at Old Trafford, yeah. and I really thought it's got to be Cantona and Alex Ferguson. It wasn't. It was Beckham. I was gutsy. Oh, Beckham was not Beckham. a bad no, no, no. no, not back then when he was seventeen. I was oh, like, right, oh right, right, right. Did you get okay. a picture of him? Yeah, I did. Oh. And, well, me and my, and my son got this, this beautiful picture of my son and David Beckham, and I was like, going, no, I don't even want to be in the picture. Oh, I went, I was so I got a new outfit and everything. <laughs> my son had a suit on because I wanted Alex Ferguson and Cantona. Oh, Oh, yeah, it was, and it's like everyone was on holiday because it was the breaks. Everybody, everybody probably went back to France, Cantona. Yeah, he did. And Sir Alex went on his holiday to somewhere hot, probably. And yeah, so I was left with Beckham. Oh, oh no, man, it's not see. bad. 21st of December, don't miss the Marcus Rashford it documentary. Looks it looks amazing. Other story of the week, Steph? Well, my story is a little bit more hard hitting. Okay. Um, it's all to do about <clears throat> hospitality. Um, and basically, this um, collective of business leaders in Manchester did a bit of research. They're known as a uh, United City. Right. And um, Metro Dynamic did a research about how much um, money was lost in the hospitality sector and it totaled to about £140 million pounds <sighs> in wages pounds. alone. In, wa in just wages? Yeah, and that's not even including like taxi drivers in that, like yeah, nightlife yeah, yeah. and stuff. Um, so oh, that's devastating. Yeah. And how, and this is all from when we went into tier three, by the way. Yeah. So just even to go into tier three. Because some, some are furloughed, aren't they, and stuff. Yeah. But a yeah. lot of the taxi drivers, freelancers, people mm -hmm. in businesses like my music and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. getting nothing. A lot of people yeah. have had nothing for nine months. I mean, I mean, when was the last time you performed live or what? Did you perform? Last year. Last year? 
toured with them on his 30 day tour and then our next gig was due to be Amsterdam in March mm. and one at yeah. Bowlers with Bez and yeah. then the whole Glastonbury everything Isle of Wight because you, oh. you were Glastonbury was on the cards wasn't it uh, we, just... we were booked yeah for June the 26th we had loads going on this year so like everybody else they all got cancelled but yeah I, I just thought I'll take a little break in January wish I hadn't now <laughs> yeah. and went on holiday January February because I've been because uh, we did a 30 day tour it's quite heavy yeah but um yeah, to be go from that to nothing and no income and people think because you're in music you've loaded. No, we just got bills like everybody else and yeah, mortgages yeah. and yeah. you just don't get anything because we're like freelancers or your limited company directors or whatever and it's um it's just hard and all the techs and all the roadies, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. the lighting guys, we're all in a <clears> bit of a, a mess. Hopefully it won't be long. Hopefully it won't be Fingers long. Crossed. You will the mum's booked for a vac vaccination Yay! on Thursday, so that's amazing. We'll chat more about the f you, what you got coming up and also got well, some that's good not me. That's my mum having a vaccination, but I'm not old enough. That <laughs> yeah. I, but I'm next on the list, though. Oh, <laughs> could be. I'm just, I'm just having my first flu jab. Oh, yeah, how was yeah. it? Yeah, it's just nothing. It's just a little scratch. <laughs> and then you and I've got the flu, yeah. Happy days. Uh, we'll get more into the chat about having one needs and what's coming up next year. Uh, but that is devastating. We're recording this on the eve of like what might be Manchester going to tier two. Fingers crossed, so you might be able to yeah. go for some food. We don't know though. It might be a bit outdated, this this little section. Uh, hopefully, if you're watching this, there is a bit of good news. Mm. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Tim, what's your story? Uh, mine's a bit more silly, obviously. Like um, silly story. It's, this is about a baking company that had to issue a warning. Uh, because they have a product called a cocoa bomb. Now, any oh. guesses what that might be? It's a baking well, company. It you know what it is already. <laughs> is it oh, you said it's baking. I was going to say something to do with poo. <laughs> <laughs> what cocoa bomb? Brown. <laughs> Blows up. What? What? Hang on. What, what do you, you think said it's it is? a bit silly, like something like, you know, like, like um, a poo. You know, like fart cushions. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a wobble cushion. Oh, like a, like a, like a stink, stink bomb. Like a cocoa bomb. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Bomb. You is said it? to guess and you said it's a bit silly. <laughs> you no, asked fine. for the guess. Any guess is a fine. Cocoa and, bomb is not. <laughs> so, what if, so basically, what it is is it's a, a ball of milk chocolate with marshmallows inside it. Ooh. That's close. And you put it in You'd a cup. You put it in a cup and pour hot milk in it. Oh, marshmallow. I thought you said Maltesers. Marshmallow. Balls of mash. Oh yes. Yeah. It's so not in exactly that. like your hot chocolate. Has it got them in? It's not got no. in. <laughs> we can get you one though. That's what I'm There's some marshmallows in. I don't know but, what demanded, but that's what I asked for. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> we'll yeah. get a cocoa bomb next time. Joking. But this, uh, basically, someone mistook it, mistook it. They saw the word bomb, and uh, oh, oh no. And they've put it in the bath. And caused a oh, right mess. Oh, you put it I thought you meant, I thought She's you meant put the cocoa bomb the in the bath. She used it as a bath bomb. Got chocolate in her hair. Oh. And no, everywhere. no, no, and then, no. Text, no. and then text her mate saying, "This bath bomb is, you know, what what have you given me here?" And oh so the, the bakery have had to issue uh, a statement saying, "Do not put these in the bath. Do They're chocolate. Amazing. They're for drinking." Wow. That, you don't want to get them mixed up, do you? I might get some of them for people for Christmas and yeah, not yeah. sell them and say put it in the bath. Is yeah, that the yeah, manager yeah, company? Bomb. Is it sorry. a local company, that? Uh, it's actually in Derry in Northern no, Ireland, sorry. No. Oh, oh, right. Right. Oh, yeah, it's just going right. to leave that bit out. <laughs> we'll cut there. Uh, right, uh, so there are our Mank stories of the week. They're all on the mank.com. Make sure you check them out, and the link is below as well. But it's time to focus our attention to our special guest, Rowetta. Uh, how are you doing? I'm really well. Uh, it feels weird for me to talk about. Um, the, the, your your uh, your when your inclusion to the Happy Mondays and starting your career as a singer, but I think that's nice for people to to start off with and, and talking about that. So when did you first start picking up a microphone and? And, and singing as good as you can. Not not like um, a lot of people who say they came out of the womb singing. I didn't. I was told to shut up all the time. <laughs> I didn't want to sing. I didn't try to sing. So um, yeah, it was, I just was never ever encouraged. Um, it, I just ended up having this talent that came from nowhere, Amazing. really. And I just I went to audition to be in the choir because my friends were going in the choir when I was about eight, and I didn't get in the choir because it sounded too different than everybody else. I was probably singing a, a different octave, so I don't know. I wasn't out of tune, but I wasn't even trying. And yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe. It, so I just thought, oh well, I'll play football with the boys and yeah. and do stuff like that, and just took no interest. And then I was into punk, so I wasn't really bothered about not singing. Um, and then I did enter the talent competition to keep someone company, and then everybody just went mad <laughs> just, wow. when I was just messing about. So it was the talent competition that. It's the talent competition, really. And then uh, when I got, came home, I was looking after this lady who had cancer, and she was upstairs in this pub, the Bay Horse in oh, Sunnybank, yeah. and she was upstairs dying, really. And, I, and she just she heard me singing along to something on the radio or the television, and said, "Go downstairs on 
that stage, you've got an amazing voice. Yeah. And the same thing happened when I stood on the stage. Everyone just went, wow. Yeah. It was just like a free and easy night mm. with a keyboard or an organ player. And um, yeah, no, it just kept happening. Mm -hmm. And I kept winning talent competitions. And, mm -hmm. and then the, the school that didn't encourage me to do anything, or I didn't know I could sing when I was at secondary school, all of a sudden musicals would be built around me. It'd be <laughs> things that would sooner well, what was sooner better. There was like a jazz opera called Trouble in Tahiti built yeah. around me. So it's brilliant. I used to wag school, never go in. But I'd, go in <laughs> I'd go in for my rehearsals yeah. and I'd go in for yeah. drama and that was it. And I really did in the fourth, fifth year. I just went in to do that. Do singing. What did you like to sing? Because uh, you say you're into the punk stuff. What did you like to sing when you were just starting out and, and, and belting tunes out? I just I, I sang what suited my voice and I sang what, because I was doing it really for talent, swing talent competitions. So I'd do River Deep Mountain High for my grandma and that went down well. Tina Turner, oh. Shirley Bassey, uh, people like that and Motown. And um, yeah, I just sing songs that suited my voice. I, I just really, people used to go, oh, will you sing this one? There was a song by Ken Dodd, I think. Uh, well, still, I think it was called. So, or Till. I would just learn songs because people would suggest songs. And I used to, I think I'd get paid for an hour, but I only had about 20 minutes in songs because you had to have <laughs> sheet music back then. And um, but the work commence clubs is where I learn all my confidence and yeah. how because some of the audience would be really hard for, if you can't sing. But uh, it just it does if you can sing. I've, I've gone in. It was a uh, royal, what's it, a British Legion in Blakely. Yeah. And it had all kinds of racist things painted outside. And I said to my mum, I can't go in. For fifty quid, I'm going in. It was a lot of money back then, probably. But and I was pregnant, 1982, and I was like, I don't want to go in. But it's like, if I don't go in, I've signed a contract. You've got to go in and sing. And I was like, I can't go in. And I went in and the audience were great. Mm. There was no kind of racism inside the place. Right. It was just all outside. And I said, Mum, I can't ever sing in somewhere like that again. Yeah, yeah. Because it's too much, the trauma of going in. But um, the fact that I did it, it makes it so much better for the future. Of what You know, it can take on anything if you can sing under those circumstances. Yeah. So yeah. I've, um, I don't really get nervous now. I can sing at Glastonbury and Wembley mm. Stadium and all yeah. that. Wow. And it's like, the bigger the better. Come on. Yeah, because you <laughs> brought up like that you that's how you just because I've sung in it's harder for me to sing in a little place like at somebody's birthday when the pressure's on you but grandma's 80th or something would have been hard I remember because people are just they're just looking at you and yeah. they're there in your face and yeah. they're like they're already telling you you're amazing before you've even done anything you know and it's like I can't have a drink I can't do that I've got yeah. to behave myself I mean I'm in a band where I don't have to behave myself and very rarely do <laughs> and um, and I sing house music a lot as well so mm -hmm. I don't have to behave myself necessarily but I always know I can sing and yeah. um, there's something about my voice it's really good I can be up all night. And then it, well, I've got to watch it now. I stopped, about eight years ago, I stopped smoking because it was starting to... Really, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sitting in smoky atmospheres was killing my voice. So um, I gave up smoking. And since then, I really do... Me and Bez, we did lots and lots of after parties last year. And it's still... My voice never really went. Even when I've got a cold, as soon as I see an audience, there's something... It's, I do think it's like a little gift because nobody in my family sings. I was never encouraged. So um, I think it was a gift. A little superpower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just came from nowhere, though, as well. And then, and when I've been really in a bad way, and I've been in Battered Wives, so I'm a lot of people know and stuff, and I'd start again with my kids. My voice is what's really kept you saved going. me. Yeah. Well, it's, it's as it saved me. It's given me... Even if I'm not successful and rich and stuff, it keeps me going because it gives me something to do. I love writing songs. Um, yeah. And now I'm being successful with that, but that was never important to me. It's just it's always given me something to do and look for. I sing every single day, me yeah, usually, yeah. unless I'm still talking because I have my chat box. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just pause the podcast for a second and get a lovely little message from our sponsor here at the Mank and something that was launched in Manchester, Helix by Revive. This is a COVID management system that's so affordable and it helps you, a business owner, or if you know a business owner, get workers back into the city. It's all done by this great app and they, they take care of everything for you so you can make sure your workers your colleagues your friends even are back in the office back working and back doing things safely as well we know there's still some times ahead of us that we don't know what's going to happen let this app do the hard work for you helix by revive now if you're trying to get the spelling on that a nice little graphic might come up here with the website and also if you're watching it get into the description of this video to find out more uh, make sure you click the link go through to it so affordable as well let's get manchester back working something that was launched in this city uh, and we are so proud of them to be our sponsors so go do that maybe after the rowetta thing okay yeah yeah, yeah. back to a chat did, did, did you make a name for yourself then and, and when were you first in, introduced into the like the happy mondays crowd when did you first meet them well, I made a name for myself in the working men's clubs and I won awards, um, like, awards? Uh, North, wow. Northwest Entertainer and stuff. Yeah, 
I won two, I think, but then um, um, my husband was violent, so I stopped singing. And then I started again and did a house tune um, that was played a lot in the Hacienda and stuff. And um, yeah, and then I did something with Mike Pickering in Graham Park. Mm -hmm. They were called Dynasty of Two. So that's how I got my pass to get in the Hacienda. And then I saw the Mondays on the TV on Tony Wilson's show, and it just went, that's the sort of band, that's the, well, that's <laughs> the band I want to join. Um, because they're from Manchester, the punky. Yeah. Um, Dancy as well, which I do house music. I would be really good with these, I'm thinking, because like T-Rex, when the woman come in, Gloria, I thought she just lifted it all up and took it in a different direction, and that's what I thought I could do with the Mondays. And, and before then, I'd not seen a band that I could join, like a punk band. I love the Pistols, I love a group called Crass, but I would never have fit, fit into a band yeah. that goes, Mara Hindley's on the cover, you're very <laughs> angry, sweet Auntie Mother. That, yeah, which was, that was my favorite. That, great, was, my, great that was my favorite song yeah. when I was like 13, but it just went away with my voice. Although I do do a good version you of do, it. You do, that was oh, a good one. I want to hear the full, full version. <laughs> <laughs> when I've had a drink. <laughs> no, but um, so it was like finding the right band, but I wasn't consciously looking. I was doing all right with my house music yeah. and stuff. And then, um, yeah, it was just perfect, perfect timing again. And um, yeah, so then um, they weren't looking for a singer, but I just went in their office all the time because my manager was Simply Red's manager at that time. I was in a dance band called Vanilla Soundcore. And we, he took us on because he'd heard me, some, somebody went mad about me. It's called Bruce. Bruce, I love Bruce from the Duretta column, uh, Bruce Mitchell. He spotted me, he was doing the lights at the boardwalk and he told um, Elliot Rashman, who managed Simply Red, you have to sign this girl, she's amazing. So he did, without even seeing me. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, well, I went for a meeting and um, because um, this guy, Bruce Mitchell had gone on and on about me and that's how it started. And his office, Elliot's office, the manager's office was next to the Monday's office manager's office so I literally used to go there every day so I'd go to see my manager and then just sit in their office all day got to know everyone who sold the t-shirts um, the art artwork yeah, yeah. everybody got to know the secretaries really well Nathan McGough really well and he said we're just not looking for him a girl it's a lab band it's not what we're looking for I'd not heard me sing anyway but they just no it's not what part of what we're looking for and then I'd met Bez I was singing in the Ritz who was supporting Gary Clayl me and my band the Vanilla Soundcore and Bez just come. I didn't never met him before. I didn't know what who he was who he was. And he came walking towards the stage, and he just started staring between my legs. And I've got these little denim shorts on with frayed denim shorts. And he's just absolutely transfixed, and he's just staring as I'm singing. It was really putting me off because he's, <laughs> he's thin faced, big bug eyes. I'm not seeing anything like it. And I was like, God. <laughs> I'm trying to sing my songs and be cool, but he was there. And anyway, he spoke to me afterwards at the Hacienda after we, after we went to the Hacienda. And he's following me around everywhere. Oh. And he's still obsessed with between me. Like, like, like some people look at your boobs or your bum. He was looking down there. And um, I was like, just no, leave me alone. I'm not interested. Oh, no. And he still swears to this day that those dangly white dangly bits are my pubic hairs. Oh. <laughs> Oh my they, God. they are my the bleach, the my denim. bleach denim shorts where I've thrown a load of bleach on them and put them in the washer. And so dangly. like tie dyes really. And the style. dangly white, he still says I'm lying. I mean, I'm a black girl as well. White <laughs> cotton. Dangling, he's still. He was fell in love oh. with my pubes. That are my pubes. Did you know who from the Happy Mondays at the time? No, we would never seen the Happy Mondays. And then I saw the Happy Mondays on the TV a few weeks later on the Tony Wilson's show, The Other Side of Midnight, and I went, oh, well, this is the band for me. I went, oh no, that guy's in it. <laughs> oh <laughs> no. He stands like that with Sean to performance, and as soon as he did a close up on his face, because I think Sean had glasses on, I think, and I, put, I didn't. And I'm like, no, it's him. And what will I do? Because I really, this band is for me, but. No. Yeah, wow. so, um, but I, I just told him I wasn't interested and if he kept following me around and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I would tell his girlfriend if he carried on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, then, and then, so did <laughs> you, when, did, when did you first caught, sort of meet up again afterwards when you were sort of part of Well, they party? weren't looking for a girl and then all of a sudden I got a phone call and Elliot, my manager, said he sat down because everyone knew I wanted to sing with yeah. him. I'd given Nathan McGough a ticket to come and see me sing across the road from um, their offices and it's where the film broke for look. I didn't really know that. Um, Legends, um, it's where, I think it's 42, 42, 42 oh, now, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was, uh, gave him a ticket to come and see me sing. Didn't think he'd come. He came on his own. I had this, like, my mum's fur coat, <laughs> did have knickers on, but a little short fur coat and a mini black, <laughs> black mini dress. And I'm pouring my whiskey on the stage, you don't think no one can see me. When I'm sat at the background of the song, that well, I'm not on. And like, so Nathan's obviously seen me, so thinking, God, she's really funny. And then so I get up, who's my song? And I'm like that. And he went, God, you're mad. And obviously I've got a, a good voice as well, but he's like, 
you imagine started then you could see started to consider maybe it was yeah, a, a maybe be, then that I could join them but there was no opportunity at the moment and so I went in the office a few weeks a couple of weeks later nothing and then probably a few days later yeah like said he sat down uh, they wanted to go to London and record a single with them and I went what who Mond oh wow and it was because wow. uh, they were on in Spain filming and uh, where they were doing um, I, where they did the step on video as well they were on tour so I didn't I thought is this real but they'd flown Mark <laughs> Day back to do some more guitars so we were doing Tokolosh Man and then um, the record label I think had said step on try a bit of step on to do for something else and um, yeah I think step on was going to be on an album for Electra, a special album, Tokolosh Man would be the single, and then when I'd done my singing, it all changed round and it was gonna step on was gonna be the obvious single. And Tokolosh Man, I think, was changed, which is the same writer, um, John Congas. So it was amazing, everybody knew there was some kind of buzz that something big was gonna happen, because up until then they'd been a bit of a cult band. Uh, when I first saw them perform was at Witness in a little hall, it's not a little hall, but a hall, compared to my first gig, which was GMAX, it was pretty small, so I couldn't believe it. Um, within, as soon as Step On came, I was going to doing Top of the Pops and doing Smash Hits, oh. and Wembley and GMAX, and it's like, <laughs> flipping heck, that's not what I joined, really. It was certainly just not what I joined. Yeah. Well, look, just a coincidence, but it was just when I joined, then all of a sudden it went boom. Yeah, <laughs> like, a right. like a cocoa bomb. <laughs> like a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Marshmallows everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so what, how did you feel like when you when you went uh, to, to join these? And they said they were a laddish band. Did you just fit in straight away? Or yeah. did you have to, yeah? Well, I knew them by them because I'd hung around for six months. Yeah, yeah. I knew everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, I knew I'd get on with them. I'm, well, I've always been one of the lads anyway. The only one I hadn't really met was Sean. I only met him the night before um, GMEX. And... You only met him the night before, really? Wow. And then yeah. Yeah, and he went, he just said, you're going to hear I'm a bleep. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. And I am. I think he might have said You're going to hear I'm a bit of a Can be a bit of a But we'll be all right. Yeah. He was talking about the gig. The gig will be all right. I went like, oh, great, because I didn't really even want to speak to him. I didn't used to see him hardly in the Hacienda. He'll have been there probably. But until I joined the band, I didn't really see him in the Hacienda where I'd seen all the other lads. And, um, yeah, but I just remember that Friday night. Um, he, he just made me feel really like it's all going to be all right. Yeah. And then when went on stage, he's the one who doesn't know the words. He's on a piece of paper and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for Step On, but it, it worked really, really well. We did two gigs at GMX, completely sold out. The whole of Manchester was buzzing. It seemed like everyone was going to this gig. And it was just amazing. And I just remember after that, when I went to Hacienda, I turned into this girl that you'd want to be when you walked yeah. in. It was like, everybody wants, it was like the sort of girl I've, I've wanted to be that girl. When I came out of the Battered Wives, I went to Hacienda and I saw this popular girl that everybody knew. And I was like, I want to be like that and get out of my life. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just after that, I was that girl, and it was it was brilliant. That's amazing. amazing. Wow. With the Happy Mondays, then obviously <laughs> many successes. But what are some of the your favourite moments from that? I was still doing it. I love the fact that we're still touring. Yeah. And everyone's like, because it used to be, it was fun at the beginning, but you end up with really bad memories because everyone was on different drugs and stuff. I like my whiskey, but there was heavy addict addiction yeah. there. And Sean's come off heroin, which is great. People on cocaine, whatever everybody's on. Even Bez has stopped smoking weed. That's what he was addicted to. Yeah. So we're a different band now and it's great. But I did love them early days, don't get me wrong, but it can't continue. Like, couldn't never mm -hmm. have continued because you would arrive in a city in America and Sean needs heroin. And it's, that's what happened when we recorded Yes, Please. Um, he smashed his methadone at the airport. And it's not funny then. You go to an island like Barbados that has no heroin, only has crack, and so you're going to have a, a mess. And um, yeah, so that was our lives then. What was it like when you used to go to different places? I've, uh, yeah, you remember you telling me a funny story about Brazil? Yeah. Your Brazil trip? I might not be able to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, because I don't. I, um, yeah, and. Brazil was brilliant. We did Rock in Rio, yeah. and um, yeah, and luckily the guitars didn't arrive on time. We were supposed to play the same day as George Michael, but our guitars arrived late, so we ended up playing. A few, we ended up getting a few extra days and playing the night that Aha played. But you had Prince on, at Guns and Roses, uh, Lisa Sansfield, and it was just it was fantastic yeah. to um, even be there, um, and we had a great time. And I don't think I can tell you any of the stories, <laughs> but we but we did meet Ronnie Biggs as well there, which yeah. was great. Um, and spent the day with Ronnie Biggs, so yeah. So, but there's lots and lots and lots of stories, obviously. But um, obviously, I very rarely yeah, say. I'm saving it for my book if I do one. You've I'm really, got to I'm, do a book. I'm really, well, I start and I start it, and then I get too upset, so I stop. But I've got loads and loads written, but I, I might never bring it out. I don't think I've ever been skint enough. To <laughs> <laughs> but if I bring it out, then something's. I'm either really old or 
money's hard. I might have to do it after this <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> Well, that's Good class. Idea. Uh, so, uh, in terms of what's happening now at the minute, and we know that the money's been told next year, but you've been doing some solo stuff, yeah. which is exciting. So tell us about that. You, I, I've been walking there, you tell me about your homemade studio and where you do singing. How's okay. that been? It's been amazing, really, because, um, well, I've always sung next, I always have my stuff all set up next to my bed so I can record ideas, and then I can go and record it properly if I need to. And I've got a studio downstairs as well. But um, quite often, I send them the demo, and they usually go, that sounds great. And I go, really? I've got dogs snoring on it. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> um, my dog, he's passed now, Back passed in, in June. It. But there was a, uh, one of my, my dog, Floyd, who's the love of my life, he used to go, oh. And he's on the, I send something <laughs> to Todd Sarah, and he's, Floyd is all the way through it. <laughs> 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 And it's like, I've got to go away with it because I never think I'll get away with it. And I've not got these, it's not, I've not got a £3,000 microphone. I've got like about, it's probably only about £300. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it does me. And it's, uh, yeah, because I can sing and I don't need too many other bits. Um, I do sing a lot. Those, my bed sessions that I do in bed, I do, a lot of them will be on records and it's brilliant. But, um, it's been amazing this lockdown for that. It's terrible because of no gigs, mm -hmm. but everybody that's ever suggested you they're going to work with you or wants to work with you, or everybody I've wanted to, there's only a couple left that I haven't worked with because nobody's touring, nobody's away. Everyone's just got time to write mm -hmm. or reach out and say, you know, let's work together. And because me and Salado, I've been in the studio with them about six years ago, and um, when he was a dick, he was called Locate then, uh, Mark from Salado. But we said last year, let's do something. Yeah, definitely, because they played my tune at one of their... Um, I mean, they, they're huge. They play all over the world, um, millions of followers. Mm -hmm. And they played one of my tunes, so I, I reposted it on social media, on Facebook and Twitter. And I remember getting a message from Mark saying, let's do something. But it was over a year ago, and then nothing. You don't hear, because they're too busy. Yeah, because they're busy. Always on, and he's, yeah. But he lives in Manchester. I'm like, oh, it's a shame, Darius Sarossian or whatever he's called. He says it, and he only lives around the corner from me. But it doesn't happen. And um, it, so now it's all been happening, and Todd Terry, all the, and it's like every day I'm getting sent stuff. A lot of it's rubbish by people that, you know, some of them, <laughs> even if they're really famous, it's not always great. But usually, to be honest, if, if they are really famous and they're great producers, you do give it a go. And yeah. Give it a go. It doesn't always work. Yeah. Sometimes I don't come up with anything great, but um, it's just been amazing. I've been bombarded with stuff and getting some amazing songs out and signed, just signed a tune with Ultra and we've done a follow-up with Salado, Ultra or so. Money. Um, for me to sign with Ultra in America is just phenomenal. Wow, and God. to get an advance, which just, you know, was unheard of for somebody um, in my position at my age, really. And Congrats. it's fantastic. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. No, but it's, uh, it's, it's with everything. And then all the, all the tunes, that's, that's the world I'm in now. And it's because of lockdown, really. And because I've got better at writing. Mm. Um, I just and he's like, God, I've done another one to three yesterday. To three, two, yeah, wow. two were great. One not so good. One needs. I'll probably just sack it. And I sent them out. And then this morning, the two of them are loved. One to one person, one to somebody else. And um, one of them, they were like, that is not really our. And there was that. Like, but I like that one. That sounded really Ibethan to me. But um, yeah, it's just I just move on and move on to the next mm -hmm. tracks. It's just because we've nothing else to do. And yeah, nothing know, else to do. Really, because because we're on some kind of they can call it with tear whatever they want, but really it's a bit of a lockdown. Suits me though because I'm used to it. I like uh, my own company. I, I tour a lot, and whereas you do spend a lot of time on your own, mm -hmm. even though you're with loads of people. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just I miss the travelling and everything. I went to Ibiza twice last year, but without the singing and the clubs and stuff, it's just weird. Mm -hmm. So I don't really like going on ho just holiday. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like to. Um, yeah, I like seeing people, but I like to wear, I like singing. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, we're going to chat more about uh, your, your stu stuff coming up next year. But we want you to judge something or whatever for us. It's okay. called... Tim? Snack of the week. Bop, oh. bop. Snack of the week. Bop, bop. Do you like that? I like it. Should have joined in. I'll drop oh, my pack. I'll drop oh, my pack. It's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Pick it up. It's okay. I'm starving. You now you said it. What is it? Is it nice? Right, well, so, Tim, over to you. Uh, okay, well, yeah, I'll go first this time then. So, snack of the week. Uh, we've been at home all year. Snacks have been in abundance. Oh, yeah. We are doing a snack off every week on this podcast. Right. And our guest is judging who has got the best snack. Without eating it? Well, well the moment, eating it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what did you so say? What did you, sorry, what did you just say? For the moment. For the moment. Nice. <laughs> I like <laughs> it. You might get a little treat later. Yeah, if my mm. mouth's watering. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> Who's going first? Tim, you're going, going first. Yeah. Right, Maybe someone I've table. got... Are you ready? Yeah, Coco Bob. Aww. The daddy of biscuits. Ooh. Lotus biscuits. Do you know, I've never fancied him, but people, my friends know these well-known people. There's a, a woman who's really well-known, a writer. 
and yeah. she looked, goes on and on about him. Yeah. And uh, Martina Cole is called, which oh, is yeah. friend. And it's like, no. No, what kind of biscuits are you into? You classic. I'm not really that much no. of a biscuity person. Yeah. Oh. Really, I like homemade anything. I love. Ooh, I do yeah. like. I like. I like Let a bit of cake. Let me set the scene for you. Sorry, I like a bit of cake though. But you've got. You've gone to a nice cafe. You've got a lot. Yeah, of because hot don't, just because yeah, you're opening it. Sexy, it's because they don't have <laughs> coffee and tea in it. That I don't mean. They look like biscuits you dip in coffee and. Ooh, it is, exactly. Yeah. That's Take a bite, Tim. That looks like a boring biscuit, doesn't it? it? Oh. <laughs> Do you know what? It is boring. No, I'm having this. No, I know it can't oh, be right, because right, boring, I've seen but... people going on about them. But it's like I've seen people going on about sometimes like just a bar of dark chocolate. Yeah. Mm. I'm sorry, it's a bar of dark chocolate. <laughs> but it has be, its place, oh, it's right? It's gorgeous because it's because it's fashionable usually. <laughs> now I think you like them because they're fashionable. Yo, oh, oh, she's called you out. She's calling. She they calling just look. Like, they time. just look like normal. They don't even look as nice they as shortcake. Mm. Shortcake biscuits from Scotland, homemade. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yes. I'm Things like that. that. Yeah, yeah. they're to be had on their own, and these are for dipping. Stop in. selling I like the colour of the. Pack it. Is that all right? Yeah, like, man, we. <laughs> I'll take Steph, that. Steph, what's yours? Oh, God, mine's a bit weird. I'm not going to lie. You're weird. Oh, no. Well, so, mine's one that I like personally. Oh, <laughs> oh a personal treat. Is it treat. fish? It's my office snack. Oh, it's not fish. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. Fish. <laughs> you were going is. for it like it was what? stinking. Fish. You were, you so, were going, grabbing for it like it was a smell of mackerel. Whipping out a salmon. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> mine are cheese cars crackers. Oh, okay. I knew it. I knew it. Last week, crackers. that's what she was doing. Oh, they're cheese flavoured. Well, they've yeah. got cheese on them as well. Oh, they're a bit too, mu too what? much. What do you mean they've got well, cheese on them? They've bit got so like oh, Parmesan oh, inside. Oh, grated on top. Yeah, yeah. It's like two on each one. Well, the oh, little just thin don't ones. eat the single ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've not had that. Oh, they look nice. Yeah. I personally like to have them by themselves. I can't say you know, in the office. Yeah. Have a little snack, you yeah. know, Tim. You know. Oh yeah. Um, I always steal them. But uh, yeah, you do. It's really annoying. Um, but, but just look at the packaging. Well, it's, it's great. You know, before you try one, I think I bring my snack of the week to it. Yeah, the Go package on. doesn't do anything for me because it's just all like crackers. But. But as soon as you said they've got cheese on, yum. Yeah, yum. They are good. Uh, trust Steph, me. Uh, I've left my snack of the week in the middle there. Can you grab it? Which one? The, the one oh, with the paper around it. Crawford's Teddies. Paper around it. Is it Crawford's Teddies? No, oh you yeah. keep going what back for is this? just one more. That's it, it's an old <laughs> advert. No, it's an old advert back in the day, and then you realise when you get them, because the advert tells you do, you can't just have you one. Can't just Crawford's cheddars, nice and cheesy. That's the one. Now the Jacob's cheddars, but well, they used no, to be Jacob's called Crawford's cheddars. Crawford's cheddars. And now, now this will be when I'm like a lot older than you lot. And they used to, you, you just keep you keep on going back for just one more. <laughs> so they, you end up tightening the top so you don't go back for them, yeah. putting them over there. Yeah. And you know, it's, and, and then, the, and then the, advert in your head. the advert comes on all the time as oh, well. Man. And you go, I'll just have one more. And yeah. you can't just have one more. Oh, and and you wake up the next day. I didn't day know they were still going, but the, yeah, it's obviously been taken. Because uh, Jacobs is crackers, aren't they? I'm not having one of them though, because that's what happens. Yeah, just have one more. I, I, I mean, psychologically, I won't even have one now, just in case. I wonder what you think about this. My uh, snack of the week is brought to you because uh, Steph has never tried it, right. so oh. we're going to get to try it. Please lift up my snack of the week. Have you tried this? It is Marmite. Marmite. Yeah, I love Marmite. Are you like joking? Marmite. Yeah. Snack of the week. So I'm just saying it's a spread. Now, you can no, get one of your crackers No, uh, it needs to be on toast. Oh, and that butter. is true, but we, we don't have, have a toaster, toaster on the Having said that, I did used to have Marmite sandwiches at school. Really? Yeah, well, how With cheap cheese. was my room? With cheese? <laughs> no. Good. How could you do this to me, Joe? Open it, <laughs> This is going to be interesting. I think I used, to, I used to have Marmite sandwiches because no, you know, people who hate it hate yeah. it. No one's gonna I, used to, I think I used to do it to just shock people. Yeah. Do you? It's what's your, what's your, while Steph's getting that ready, what's your favourite snack? Do you like a packet of crisps or something? I like roast potatoes, but they're not Ooh. snacking. Hot roast potatoes. No, you know, like when I'm going out. Marmite. Hot roast potatoes. That's what I would have to take on the tour bus. Well, they're hot. Really? Yeah. Crisp, crispy, oh. but soft in the middle. A little lunchbox of if, roast potatoes. Yeah, because you know the calves and they're not good. Have you got any roast potato tips for us? Do you Just make your be, own? Yeah, but they've got to be crispy on the outside and soft. And the, well, goose fat's good and breadcrumbs yeah. work, works really well as well. Breadcrumbs as well? Yeah, breadcrumbs oh, nice. as well. If you've got, if you, uh -huh. Just, re yeah, double carbs. You can't beat double, double carbs. Yeah. Would yeah. you take a little, a, little sugar, a little flask of gravy for them as well? No, okay. no, you know, you're talking. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there is a place that does them, though, really well. And if I've got time, I will stop. And it's uh, it's not that in Cheadle. Oh, and if yeah. I've got time, I will stop and get just... And they give me a massive... What place is this? It's called Mickerbrook. 
it's, oh. and it's just they do roast, I live five they do carver it, they do carver it, but I just go for the roast potatoes. So it's got to a stage they know I'm not that bothered about the roast dinners. I was just and they give me <laughs> silly usual, amount please. of potatoes. I tell you what, the Mickey Brook is great. I it's the roast potatoes though. It's, so it's just ridiculously Ooh, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. So when they give me, you know, in the new that you get different people's different stuff, they give me four roast potatoes. I go. No, I only come for the rose potatoes. Just give potatoes. me a whole plate. No, and I looked, I looked to somebody, somebody tell, somebody tell him. He's only giving me four potatoes <laughs> like everybody else. But somebody tell him. And I try not to go because I eat too many. You know, I will eat a big bag of them. But yeah. now, apart from that in snacks, apart from that in snacks, what do I like? What do I like? What do I like? Um, I'm not really a sweetie, sweetie person. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I do like, I do like. Um, from Kentucky, I like the drink with bits in oh, the crushes. Crushes. Mil milky bar one. Oh. Yeah, and my son said it sounds disgusting. I've That's gone off it because I've overdone them. Um, <laughs> so your dream would be a crushing with loads of. No, potatoes. I love ice cream. Good oh. I just I love I love a really nice ice cream. And McDonald's do a nice ice cream because I don't eat the food. Yeah. I get I do treat the dogs. Do they nice little bit of ice cream? I order, no, I order a burger with a che well two two double cheeseburgers with no cheese, no bun, no pickle, no sauce. Basically, uh, just two <laughs> right. to, the You have to take no this, no that, no, and, it, and they go. So they say, and they give you the burger, and it's just two burgers. And, and then you give it to your dogs. That's a double cheese. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and they go, are you sure? So, yeah, it's not for me, it's for my dogs. <laughs> yeah, cute for ages, that's, that's so a treat. Good. No, it's like you're taking your kids to the... Should we go to McDonald's? And they go... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Oh, Whenever nice. I've been on tour, straight to McDonald's, and I have, like, an ice cream or a McFlurry, yeah. Yeah. but a plain oh, one. I, just like, I do like their ice cream. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice isn't it? Mm. Oh, it's that's so... I'd love to see a picture of the dogs with just the I've got a lot of... No, I do. No sauce. No pickle. No, just the sometimes they accidentally leave cheese on or something. I'm like, no, no we can't yeah, go back. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I'm going to have to pick up the cheese, but the dogs love it when there's a stinky oh, bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's treated I'm like, you won't yeah. sleep tonight. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Stop eating the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Would you dogs like Marmite, Steph? It sounds a dip in the Marmite. I feel like this is like Come on, just dip it in. I don't, in. I don't like too much. You need to be on something, really. But it's just good. Good. the good thing is, you've not gone yuck straight away. You've gone all right. You know what? Some people. Some people go to York straight away and ooh. Yeah. She's adventurous. Go on, stick it outside. in, stick it in. Here it's like go. the licorice of spreads. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, nice. I don't like licorice, but yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, God, it's like bit caramel. More, bit more. I think some people lie and pretend to yeah. hate it. That yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, it's oh, sticky. It's Here quite strong, though. Oh, Here we go. Shove it in your gum. You've never eaten it? No, I've never tried. I've been too scared to try it. Lick it. Go God, it's salty, <laughs> isn't it? Jeez. Just take a big bite. No, that might be a cheesy, cheesy thing. No, yeah, tell the truth. It's good. It's nice. Tell the truth. No, you just <laughs> no, you're pretending not to like it. The, the <laughs> only thing is, it doesn't it's go with really it. Really strong, so, like sour and salty. Oh, yeah, it's very is. strong, but you get used to it. <laughs> you know, you Imagine it, it on toast with like butter and all. No, all no, you have a fan. It's like sprouts. You either love them or you hate the same yeah, yeah. But I tell you what, I thought I'd love because I love peanut butter. I thought I'd love the combination. It's horrible. What? The, oh yeah, the peanut butter. Peanut butter and marmite, marmite together. Peanut butter and marmite. Do you want me to tell you a mad sandwich? And I love someone, peanut butter, but no. Uh, oh, God. Is crunchy peanut butter. Well. Oh. Toast, yeah, butter, yeah, I love marmite, it. No. crunchy peanut butter. Yeah. Wait for it. This is the mad bit. Well, not too much. Cheese. Yeah. Cucumber. 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 And peanut. Yeah. I love cucumber. And the, no. that mixture of the textures and Just like shove the some savory, bananas. The shove some bananas on and down the <laughs> toilet like Elvis. New York is vile. I promise you, it's nice. No, I, I don't like the combination of the. I, I thought I would. I thought I'd love it. I was like, I went to I went to the supermarket and I'm like, have you not got it yet? Because it was advertised on the TV. I've got to have this. That's made for me. Marmite and peanut yeah, butter. Yeah, delicious. Mm. Ugh, it what? just doesn't quite work. You're just enjoying your peanut butter taste, and then the marmite kicks through, Ooh. and it's just a, it doesn't go. It's like it's like people who have fish and chips and gravy. Oh, oh no, gravy. I like that. And, how, how can you have gravy on fish Gravy's and chips? Bit, I don't know about gravy. <laughs> about anything, fish. You can't have fish with gravy. Oh, I might have chippy later. From the chip, oh, yeah. you can't have gravy. You can have curry. Yeah, yeah. Are, but ugh. but oh, why? What? Yeah, go on, sorry. No, 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 no. It's go beef on. based in it, gravy. You can't put that on fish. That's a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's a big debate, isn't it? It's a big debate. I was just going to ask, what do you do for food-wise on tour? Do you, when you go on tour, do you, do you have a 
catering company with you or do they just provide stuff when you get there? We have done. It depends where, we, like when we've done arenas. We're doing an arena tour with James. We'll probably have a catering company that feeds everybody because it's easiest. But when we do a 30-day tour, not everywhere's got a kitchen. Right. Mm. So it's not possible. So you end up getting, and we're quite happy, you get money each day to go out and oh, get your dinner. You get yeah, we get dinner. dinner money and it's just dead funny. Have you had yours yet? <laughs> and they forget when they haven't had it. And the support tour manager who doesn't know he's, if he's got some out down who's had theirs. Because it ends up, you end up with, if you don't, if you don't spend loads of money on your dinner, you end up with a nice wad of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, or if you take your roast potatoes and your sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it works well, but we, we have fridge, a nice fridge usually on a tour bus, if, we, if we've got on a tour bus. Or quite often the lads like to go home every night. Right. I'm not bothered because I have dogs at home as well, so I end up, it's, no, I, I like to just switch off when back in a hotel room is easier for me, cool, really. Out, but, um, yeah, I do a lot of after parties with beds, so that works out well. But, yeah, it's just, it's, sometimes you've got to remember to, to eat, though, at the right time, because it's no good going on just before we go on, because it, you, you'd be like that, yeah, yeah. jumping yeah. up and down. Can you feel it in your stomach? So it's like when we just arrive at a gig and I'm like that, what time are we getting there? What time are we going to be there? Because we do need to have some food. Need to eat, because if we don't eat, can't drink. Oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> such a good lesson. <laughs> That's, <laughs> you That's what I'm like. If we don't, up, <laughs> <you>? <laughs> if we don't eat, I can't don't drink, then I can't dance this. with Bez. <laughs> End of. That's what's on your rider, isn't it? Roast potatoes in the dressing room. <laughs> we don't. I wish, Make I wish. Sure. I wish. No, it's usually like Chinese or whatever chip yeah, it was yeah. there, which is um, the ones you can order with your apps are really, really good, yeah. get delivered. Quite often I have to leave it till after the show, but we always have uh, sandwiches and fruit. You, we get a rider, so, so they go shopping for you every day, so Mint. the fridge is full of what I like. But I end up saying, I'd like a whole chicken, roast chicken, and then I can just pick a tick. All through the day we're doing sound checking all that lot. And then you get sick of chicken, it's like, if I see another chicken, <laughs> and then they forget to take it off your rider, and you've got chicken, chicken, all the things you wanted at the beginning of the tour. You don't want it, but <laughs> after three weeks. Dinner, though, aren't you? After three weeks, you don't want to see any more chicken. <laughs> yeah. I just saw someone with a roast chicken on the first day and went, oh, can I have that every day then? They can make sandwiches if you want, or you yeah. can have it with wow. whatever, uh, get some chips and have it that. But yeah, you end up, I'm sick of chicken, but yeah, somebody <laughs> somebody lost the memo where Roberta doesn't like chicken anymore. Oh, that's so then you, Yeah, guys, chicken, um, chicken everything. Sorry, have any of the guys got any uh, odd or unusual things that they put on the rider? Um, <laughs> but, um, usually, usually, because they're not they're not very demanding. Sean doesn't come till just before the gig and leaves just after, so he's got he has his vapes. Uh, he doesn't have much. Yeah. Um, no, we've got a vegan. The drummers are vegans. So that can be difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, not really. Very, very easy. Um, mm. Sandwiches and crisps and All that. sweets. Yeah, they because like, they they have their own room. The boys have one room. I have a room. Bez has a room for him and his mates. And um, Sean usually just pops in and out. So I'm happy. I've got my girls' room with, you know, yeah, and true. own fridge. And Smells yeah, nice they up. never give me crisps though or anything. So I usually go in the boys' room to get crisps. But I, I, it's because at the beginning of a tour, I will say, don't. Don't give me a bag of loads of crisp and, and bread it, yeah. because I don't want to have loads of carbs. That's why I'm being good. And then you end up going, I need some bread to make <laughs> yeah, a chicken yeah, yeah. sandwich. I need some crisp to put on my chicken sandwich. What crisps would you go for? Chicken, but I'm not in it. Chicken crisps? <laughs> no, I did. I did, but then you end up, I was sick of chicken. So I had to, they were going, we've not been able to get chicken crisps. But I don't want to see any chicken crisps anymore. What about prawn cocktail crisps? No, I hate them. They're, they're oh. always left. They're always left. Oh, you should come on tour with us because they're I'll the ones. I'll take them all. You know when they have the mixed bags? Yeah, yeah. they get left. Well, because they're the always ones. No one ones. likes really? them. Really? Yeah. None of the plane, I, like always, I like plain best, really, now, because I, you know, I always sneak the plane because Gaz has plain because he's a vegan. Yeah. Um, so I have to, you know, make sure I get my plane. No, no, the prawn cocktail are the ones that get left because it's like, stop buying them mixed bags because some of the flavours don't get Salt and vinegar and prawn cocktail never get eaten. Never what? get eaten. Right, Rowetta, who's, win who's winning? You got the Marmite, the crackers or the biscuits? It's definitely the... Cheese melts. Oh, yeah. because, yeah. Yeah. because we've got cheese on because I've never tasted these, so I can't really judge. Yeah, Thank you. I think Thank they're you. like they look they look like yeah, they just they look yeah, rubbish. Flavour is lotus. There's nothing about it. It should have a flower on it or something. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> it just looks. It, they don't look attractive. I thought that was like. <laughs> it's I, I honestly, no, I've not yeah. eaten them. I might go. Oh my god, they're amazing. But they're all right, just a bit overrated. Just a bit overrated. Can I have a tiny yeah. taste. Yeah, we could cut this bit out. I've, 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 Ever wait, we've only got about 15 minutes. We've got one one bit and then final chat. Do you like <laughs> They're it? They're just a f <laughs> <laughs> They're just like any other biscuit. They're like, yeah. they've got unique. They're flavor. like the ones you get from <laughs> me. Son gets from Aldi for 20p. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, wow. Sacrilege. No, they're nice, wow. but they're just biscuits. Okay. 
<laughs> right, we do a thing called Steph's Big Question. Way. Oh, that, that's what they are. They're the biscuits you get in hotel rooms. Yeah, exactly. The little oh, ones. right. That's, that's why I'm not... Oh, with the little coffee. Yeah, and you're like, God, they go with coffee well. Yeah. And, and that yeah. probably, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I've seen him. It's, it's in your hotel room. Yeah, it's it free. Can't always get rid free. of him. <laughs> Steph, you got you can get involved in this. It's only a, a big question we put online. Yeah. So our big question, well, my big question, um, we put on Facebook, and in light of you being our special guest, we thought mm -hmm. we'd do a music music related question. Mm -hmm. So we asked on Facebook, um, what was the first gig you went to in Manchester, and where was it held? Mm -hmm. And we've got some comments here. Let's read through them. Um, Guy called Adam says he saw Rick Astley at the MEM. Rick Astley? Mm, we're yeah, good good gig. You're never going to give you up. Yeah. Um, someone saw uh, Boyzone in MEM when in they were the seven. Um, Oasis at Main Road in the Oasis. Wow. Wow. We, 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 we toured with Oasis, amazing line. Did you play, yeah. Were you at Wembley with them? All, all that tour, Wembley Stadium two nights. Yeah. Wow. With, we did. Um, we did each each gig, and we had Doves doing some and Johnny Marr yeah, doing yeah. some. So yeah, Reebok Stadium, wow. Murrayfield in Edinburgh, and Wembley Stadium. It was amazing. amazing. They were amazing. That they was awesome. insane. It was what brilliant. What memory? Right, what's yeah. your first gig in Manchester? Do you remember it? Yeah, I do. It was the Apollo. Oh. And yeah. it was White Snake. White Snake. Ooh. Because was it I really? fancied a lad who liked White Snake, <laughs> oh. and I bought Standard. the ticket for him. I was only 10, 11, 11. First year, first year at Berry Grammar. Yeah. And he was in the boys' school. He was in the fourth year. Yeah. So I bought the ticket. Yeah. It but you know, like years, you know, years, you know, years later, you know, years, years later, yeah. but I like, really fancied him because he was four years older as well and everything. Yeah. Mm. And he's just, no. And he, <laughs> he was like, he tried it on with me. I was like, no, no. Sorry. I remember, oh, no. I think he was at the boardwalk. I think he played, oh, I don't know if I'm not saying who he is, <laughs> but um, I think he might have played an instrument. But it was like, oh my God, imagine what you could end up with though if you go with someone when you're 10. Yeah. Oh God. Oh so, my God. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I don't, even, I don't even know if we kissed, I can't remember. I just remember being at this gig and having to pretend to headbang and I didn't have that hair that you headbang yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it's embarrassing. That. It was awful. I was having to go, what? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't Amazing. know the words, so I'm having to pretend. It's terrible when you've got to pretend you know the words. I didn't have a club, never heard. So never heard. I'm, I'm not, um, I, I do, I think White Snake are a great band. Yeah, but, but, I do, but um, Not a headbanger. No, and I'm, I'm, the song I would have heard of them, it became... Uh, famous to me was like it was more of a commercial song anyway it's not my mm. cuppa mm -hmm. mm. Steph mm -hmm. any more um, someone Lucy saw James at the Apollo in 1998 oh we're playing with James yeah, that, oh, I'll amazing. save that for later I've got a question oh. Have you? Mm. I've sung with him as well Tim Booth and James yeah. at the MEN Arena I did <laughs> the Manchester vs Cancer yeah I remember yeah I think yeah. you remember yeah. he's good yeah. yeah. Any more? Any more? Um, couple more. Wayne has seen Cindy Lauper at Manchester Apollo in 1995. Ooh. Oh. That's a good one, isn't it? It's a really good one. Um, Oasis again, Main Road, Oasis, yeah. Heaton Park. Oh, yeah. A lot of Oasis going on. Steph, what's yours? Oh, you don't want to know mine. Yeah, go on. No, You've no, got to know no. Is this the first one? First one, Steph. Come on. Oh, no, it's quite. All right, okay. You've got to yeah, say yeah. it. Mm. I was about... lie like I do on what's your first record. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to know? Yeah, we do. Yeah. I think I was about. Take that. No. Worse. Um, 11. <laughs> 11. 11. No, maybe younger than that, actually. Who's worse? 11. No, not worse. Um, the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> oh, right. The no, Jonas good. Brothers. No, they're really good. I think they're really good. good. Yeah. I like the Jonas Brothers. They're amazing. Tim, come on. They're amazing, but I knew you guys would be like, ah. Oh, no, I, I, they're Jonas really good. Yeah. No, because they're talented. And yeah, they're yeah, they are. All right, then. Pop. Jonas Brothers. 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 Yeah, I yeah, want your so sex and all. I love uh -oh. father figure. <laughs> Tim, yeah. what was yours? So pop, there's nothing wrong with pop. Good pop. Yeah. yeah, I've got a good one actually. Yeah. My parents took me to see the Eurythmics. Go blame your, your parents. Your yeah. parents got taste. Yeah, <laughs> and that was, really and one. you know, at the time, didn't, it was a really, really good show. Didn't really know what was going on or know anything about them, but now I'll hear the songs back on the radio They're and brilliant. I remember my parents listening to them in the car and I'm like, wow, that uh -huh. was like a, a, That's a class, big though. gig, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. definitely. Amazing. I saw Barney. Do you know the dinosaur? <laughs> oh, the big purple guy. That's not a gig. <laughs> he sang. That's not a gig, no. He was at the arena. No, I That's saw not... Daniel LaRue at the Palace in pantomime. That's not a gig. No. Barney's not a gig. It's, not a, it's gig. a children's Barney's show. Barney's more a children's show, yeah. Oh, all right. And, uh, uh, did so... Barney even sing? Yeah, he... Very well. What did he sing? Do you not know that song? Barney's a dinosaur. Come on. Barney is he purple? Is a... Yeah, he's purple. Yeah, purple. I love it. Went wild. He crowd surfed. Chaos. Everyone's only five. Surf. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have been back to the lad's house and he had a Barney. <laughs> he has <laughs> what? He had a Barney toy. A Barney. Oh. No, from when he was younger. Oh, right. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hello, Bob. He's too young, you too young. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, we do a thing called Master Mank, right? Now, master I know. Master what? Master Mank. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be some podcast, wouldn't it? Uh, what we're going to do is, I've got some questions about. I won't be very good at it, just so, no, but so I've you got know. Some questions about, I've got some questions about you. Right, yeah, and see how many you can get right because okay. it's your mastermind. Now, normally, when I was first doing stuff with like Rowetta at the BBC, Rowetta used to make me cheat and text to the answers when she was stopping us, have to do it again. Oh, Stop it, right? Now, you know I was watching with the BBC, she used to have all these ex footballers on, and they always do it. Oh, it's great, you couldn't believe how knowledgeable I was. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge of football, and I was outside of the studio, it was texting Peter to the answers. Schmeichel in the 13th minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, she really knows her spots. <laughs> so this is a combination of Happy Monday stuff, your stuff, and some United stuff in there as well, because okay. I know you like it. So only a couple of questions. Right. Which celebrity reality TV show did Bez win? Big Brother, I was Big there. Big Brother? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, he went in on my birthday. I was there for the, him going in, and then they banned all his friends for intimidating Jeremy Edwards' <laughs> family and friends. So it was only me and his girlfriend were allowed to go in. Oh, really? So you yeah. saw it when he was in? It wasn't intimidating. It was like, that's our way! <laughs> <laughs> Get your hands off, that is ours. Who was the Manchester United manager before Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Oh, it was Van Hal. That was El Mourinho. Mourinho, <laughs> <laughs> correct. The again? No, I was joking. Was I was joking. joking. Yeah, it was Moyes, Van Hal, and Mourinho. Yeah, perfect. Tip. No, no, I was joking. It was getting me wrong because I always used to get it right. I always used to get it wrong. I'm an expert. Just, I was joking. Right. Right. I was joking. It's obviously Mourinho. Who was your mentor in the X Factor? Stop trying to tell me the answers. It was Simon Cowell. <laughs> Simon <laughs> Cowell, <laughs> tick. Uh, where are you playing with James? He's still trying to give me the answers. That's why I'm Yeah, I can see him mouthing stuff. Where what? Where are you playing next year? What all the places? No, just the one in Manchester. Where are you playing with James next year? It's called. Aeon is it now? I don't yes, know how to say it. Aeon Arena. So I've, I've done it. I've sung there before with them as I was saying oh. it in Manchester Arena. Let's so it'd be go. good. Who did you play in the 2002 movie 24 Hour Pipe People? Myself. Was a tough you one. played yourself. Yeah. Well. I don't think I'm the thinker. <laughs> did I? Okay. What fruit do you like to twist in the Happy Mondays? I always thought it made me real life. <laughs> <laughs> Twisting <laughs> melons. Melons, the final one. Uh, what animal did Sean Ryder poison in Manchester one time? It's not an animal, is it? It's a rat with wings. It's a rat with wings. Pigeons. Do you, do you remember the story? Pigeons? Have you heard the story? No, an animal. No. Is, a, is it a bird? No. It's, it's a vermin. He, he, I think the story, to paraphrase it, he... It's true. He, he so. put some... Um, what's it? Poison rat poison. Down, rat poison down with some bre- to bread. To kill the pigeons. I don't know. Yeah, and stuff. then there was loads of pigeons came and ate the rat poison bread. <laughs> and then the next day in Manchester, there was just pigeons <gasps> everywhere. Someone asked us if it's true. Jesus. And he said, a lot of the stories in the film weren't true. Well, that one was. 24-hour <laughs> party people watched that. But that one that. was. No yeah. way. The, pigeon yeah. the most unbelievable ones will be true and even worse probably in real life. <laughs> wow. But yeah, the ones where it's just a bit of comedy, they'll We're probably be false. I yeah. think you didn't get anything wrong so round of applause yeah, well done. Done. I nearly got one wrong by trying to show you because you were trying to tell me the answer I know United I know my you stuff you do know mate. sorry about that so let's talk about next year hopefully uh, we'll see Happy Mondays live um, yeah. and tell us about that tour with James that should be fun yeah the tour with James is November December I think it's sold out most places but check for tickets um, Ticketmaster and all that but yeah it's um, only about 8 gigs I think at the end of the year so hopefully that'll happen um, and I'm over the moon because I love James and say I performed with them before we did Atmosphere Joy Division's Atmosphere for Manchester versus Cancer so I'd love to work with um, well sing with live with Tim again it'd be nice I don't know if it'll happen because we'll have to rehearse and all that it's yeah. just this year it's just anything will be great but I'm just really really happy that my tunes are doing well the Salado one's doing well Youssef's doing well mm-hmm. and um, yeah I've got loads and loads and loads more coming out um, I'm very very lucky I just worked with someone called Junior Sanchez who's brilliant he's worked with Madonna Katy Perry and Wow. Ariana Isn't Grande and all this outside. and it's like yeah. and then you go really? He goes can I send you something? He says yes you can <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we got that done uh, a couple of weeks ago so there's just loads and loads and I've Lots done a tune much. with the amorphous androgynous who is Gary Cobain who is the future sound of London and he did the album with Noel Gallagher that never came out. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. But I've done this one with Paul Wellers on vocals as oh, well. Paul Wellers. Steve Craddock on guitar. Oh. Noel Gallagher on drums and bass. Oh. Noel Gallagher on drums. Oh. On drums and really? bass. What? Yes. <laughs> and Kate Bush's nephew on violin. Oh. Oh. When's that coming out? Do we, Soon, I think, yeah. Really? Exciting. But you know it's taken three years to do, and That's it's like, crazy. I hate things that take ages. It's like, hurry up. So I've noted the final mix, but he said to me, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, the thing that was coming out before it has just come out, so it's coming. How can people keep up to date with you, Rowetta? 
Just anywhere. I just Rowetta on Twitter, yeah. Facebook. Facebook. I'm, I'm good on Facebook I'm replying to people. You'll see a lot of pictures of today. <laughs> You see it's well, it depends how, how bad or good I look. I always blame the photographer. Who's the photographer? <laughs> We're all no, taking um, Yeah, no, so, and um, Instagram and all that, and I do the Monday, a lot for the Mondays as well, yeah, if you want to see the Mondays. Um, but yeah, just, um, yeah. Amazing. Right, final question for me. I'm easy to find on the social media. Uh, what is a Rowetta Christmas like? Ooh. Well, this year, last year, I was so lucky. It sounds, sounds terrible. But because my dog was really, one of my dogs wasn't well, and I'd really been nursing him all the time, I said to my mum, and my grandma had passed as well, so it's like, it's rubbish Christmas now. It's literally me, my mum and my son. My daughter stays in London. So it just seemed a bit, should we just leave it this year? So I went, as soon as they started to go, yeah, and I went, can I go to Mallorca? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well. <laughs> I was just them. saying, should we just not do much this year? As soon as they went, both went, yeah, yeah. So I booked my flight straight away and went. And this year, I can't do it again. <clears throat> I'm going to spend the day with my mum, my son, yeah. at my mum's, um, hopefully, um, with my dogs. And then, yeah, because I used to take them, I was taking them out for dinner, and they, don't, they didn't print and they never done nice. There was this bird in a bird in a bird, or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Derek said, my son, he said, it looks just like the ones, the frozen ones in Aldi, and that's what it tasted like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> It was horrible. You like a sunny Christmas then? You want a sunny Christmas? No, I don't like the sun. It's not hot this time of year though. Oh, right, anyway, right. It's nice, nice though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like the people when I go over there. So yeah. I've got loads of friends. So this year I'm not going to do New York. I'm going to Bezzy's on Boxing Day. Yeah. Um, because of the pandemic, it's a pain to travel because I always go away on my birthday. I'm going to go to Valencia for my birthday this year. Oh, nice. Um, That'll be good. I would go to Ibiza, but there's no direct flights as well. But um, yeah, Valencia, I've got loads of friends there. I'm going to wake up to the City of Arts and Science Museum, which I'll just love. It's all turquoise and beautiful and stunning. Yeah, awesome. Where normally I like to open my curtains to the city. It's the sea I love more and the lake. But um, yeah, so I'm going to do that and forget about everything that this year, hopefully. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. And um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. But New Year's Eve, maybe at Bessie's, he's getting fireworks and all that lot. Um, but I don't know if it's, like, all the people you never want to see again will be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them, a lot of them like, ex boyfriends and everything, they live on his land and it's you like, because he lives in the middle of nowhere in Herefordshire. And it's like, you get up in the morning and they're there and you go, I thought he was. I didn't think he was alive anymore. Or, <laughs> or I certainly didn't expect to see him at Bezzy's. You know, you know when they used to leech years ago? The ghost yeah. of New Year's Eve passed. Yeah, someone just... was listening to Whitesnake in the kitchen. You got... <laughs> Whitesnake? <laughs> when you were, I, mean, I remember I'm like, I finished with him in 1992. <laughs> like, because he's just a ligger. And he's they're still ligging. Oh, oh my God. And if he's watching this, I'm not sorry. It's a true. Oh, 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 yeah, do it first. Amazing. He's going, he's going, I'll go when my dog dies. That's what he said to Bez last time. The dog's dead and he's, not my dog, it is dog. The dog's dead and he's still there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well. I went, where's his dog? He went, the dog's dead. He said, he'd go with the dog. <laughs> not keeping the contract. <laughs> so, Rometa, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. This has been the mic. Steph, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now Excuse for Steph's me. Uh, big question that will be on our Facebook and Twitter. What is that, Steph, on the Facebook and Twitter? Um, it is just the Mank UK. The Mank UK. Mank UK. If you've got any suggestions on how Tim can improve his snap game, let Tim know. Uh, that's the <laughs> Mank UK as well. I've been Joe, that's been Rowetta. Thank you very much for watching. Hit subscribe, please like the page as well, and we'll see you very, very soon. Bye bye. Bye <laughs> bye one more time. Stop eating the biscuits if you've got. Now I know the them ones. <laughs> Wave Rowetta. <laughs> now I know the hotel ones. Now I like them because. Do you like me? now after you diss me? Or... When you've been out all night and you come in and you're starving, that's all there is is one pack of two biscuits, them two biscuits. <laughs> and if you're lucky, you've got someone with you and they go, have you got any food? <laughs> no, I've got these two biscuits. <laughs> one each. I don't want to go in one each. I quite often lie. <laughs> go in the toilet and eat. <laughs> if you don't eat, you can't drink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have a couple of biscuits. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, well, bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was class. Amazing. Amazing. So, so good.